Welcome to StockInvest.us podcast. We remind you that trading involves a high risk of losing money, and that you should speak with a financial advisor before buying or selling any securities. You should not base your investment decision upon StockInvest.us. By using the information provided you agree and are held liable for your own investment decisions. Hi and welcome to StockInvest.us podcast for week 36. And what a week last week was portfolio in green. The stocks that we analyzed in this podcast, more or less straight on the target. Bitcoin did not hit 54,000, but right now trading around 52,000. So direction for the crypto was very spot on. And uh, I will in this podcast, as usual, tell you what I think will happen with crypto and these major stocks. As I said, the portfolio indeed very well. Some stocks were even up 20%. The two talk, uh, stock tips last week, which I bought on uh, Monday, also did very well. We'll get back to that shortly. In this podcast, I will do as I always do. I will give you a brief overview of what I think will happen this week, give you some uh, key indicators, etc., what to look for. Quick look into some of the major stocks, because that will give us a certain idea about the general direction of the market. Pass into the crypto, of course, we'll do uh, Bitcoin and Dogecoin also this week. Uh, A little analysis tell you what I think will will happen. Uh, Have a quick uh, look into two stocks, which I think will do very good this week and which I will trade. I will also look a little bit back on the stocks that I've been trading the last few weeks, tell you exactly how it went, because many of these positions are now closed. And the podcast looking at the portfolio. And uh, all in all, it should take some 25, maybe 30 minutes of your time. And uh, I am sitting uh, in my office right now. I have a beautiful view out of the River Neris in Vilnius. But above me is construction work. And uh, this will certainly affect the podcast. You may hear some drilling or hammering. I'm sorry about that. But uh, as a lesson, stock trading is also about handling the unknown, the noises. This will affect you either noises uh, in terms of news, in terms of sudden changes in the stock, uh, and these things may throw you off your trading path or your ID. You may sell too early, sell too late, because you simply get disturbed by the noise. So we will deal with it straight on. I'm used to handling um, issues. I have to admit that I've been trying now several times making this podcast but ending up with drilling above so this will be the very last attempt anyway uh, we will go straight um, to the main deal what will happen with the market this week last week i told you i thought it would be a very nice week indeed it was for nasdaq and as i said get nasdaq probably above 15,000. it's 15,300 something right now 15,363 points it will go straight to 16,000 points. I'm very certain about that, that we will just continue to see the rally. Last week, Nasdaq was up 1.55% in total. And as I told you, uh, I thought that the small caps will do good. And they really did. Companies like Ur Energy, NIO, the ones that we follow did all very well. Uh, Ur Energy was up some 20% or more. So that stock in the portfolio is about 50% right now and doing so, uh, so, so good. And I think more will come. Dow Jones uh, did a little bit uh, less, was uh, actually falling minus 0.25%. But it's kind of natural. It was this major stocks. And as I told you in analysis of Apple, Microsoft, I thought they would go sideways, maybe even fall a little bit. It was bought on and exactly that is reflected in... Uh, Dow Jones, uh, for instance, for these major, major companies. I uh, tell you something about the buy and sell signals uh, across the world, because this will give us an idea when is market cheap and when are markets expensive. And I've been telling you week after week that uh, everything, in my opinion, been very good because it's been low amount of buy signals. We get some support below. We passed at 14,000 level. We get about 15,000 level at the Nasdaq. And these things should help making the market go upwards. What scares me is when there is too much buy signals because then the market is overheated and you can just wait for a correction. 
and I can tell you straight out what I think right now because if we go to Asia and we look at the, uh, the buy and sell signals in Asia, we can say that in Japan, in Tokyo uh, Stock Exchange, there is 41% buy signals right now and that starts to become very high. Shenzhen, 35% uh, buy signals. This indicates to me that, and we usually see this, that very soon uh, Asia uh, will be, in my opinion, overbought and get ready for a slight correction. I have seen these uh, buy signal figures getting far up in the 50s, 60s before things happen. But I think that that will be the first sign that we will also have a small correction in uh, the US markets. Because if you look at US markets, we can say that Nasdaq only 29% buy signals, nothing uh, especially high about that. New York Stock Exchange 36, uh, Europe we have Frankfurt at 29. So I like these, uh, these kind of levels indicates to me that for sure next week will most likely be green, even in Asia. For the week after, it might start to be a little scary in Asia, and that could affect the US market by the end of the week. But for the week as such, ahead of us, I think it's great. We can back it up with some fundamental news. Uh, the 10-year treasury yield didn't move much last week. It is 133, so it's kind of low. Oil unchanged at 68, still a little bit high. I expect the oil to go down. And... Uh, go closer to uh, below 60 level. That's that's uh, my prediction for the oil. I've been uh, very optimistic about oil all the year. Actually, since last year, saying that it will just go up, up, up. It will hit 100 on a certain event, but I don't see that event yet right now. Afghanistan is fading out. Uh, we have accepted Alban has taken over Afghanistan. So the next thing to really push the oil price should be either some very... Uh, special situation in the Middle East or some aggression towards China. I think that are the things that can really push the oil price. Otherwise, everything should indicate that the oil price uh, should not go up, could move sideways or even fall a little bit simply because the production is getting up, everything is getting back uh, to line. Of course, the consumption of oil is also increasing, but as I told you many times, the open countries, uh, countries increased the oil production. I think that the uh, supply will uh, overbid the demand and slowly push uh, oil back. And at some point, I still believe before Christmas, we can see a huge rally in oil, but I don't see it this week. So I'm still uh, tending towards oil below 60. Gold, as I told you, will head back to 2000. And last week I said, I believe even can hit 2500. Nothing much last week, unchanged at around uh, 1,828 points. The reason I think gold will go up, I said that last week, and for any new listeners, is simply because when things start to get scary, you will see money flow into more secure items, and I think gold will be one of them. Uh, if we prolong the argument, uh, the idea which I had earlier, that Asia is slowly getting very high on buy signals, I think that by end of this week, we should start to see some movements in gold uh, for sure the week after so if it's not this week i think that the week after we will see gold start slowly pushing upwards again in my opinion could be one of these indicators that you can follow i really recommend you to follow the treasury yield because there is such a disruption between what is happening the prices are going totally crazy around the world the inflation is going us not uh, job numbers did not uh, hit uh, what they were supposed to hit everything is actually going slowly in Wrong direction, uh, but the treasury yield is very silent, doesn't move, but I think that very soon it will start to have some major uh, leaps. And also these things indicate the possible correction um, in the market. So the big question you wonder then, will it be this huge, huge uh, correction or will it just be a short one? What I know uh, in my opinion or what I really believe is that for sure Nasdaq will push upwards to uh, 16,000. On the way up to 16,000, of course, it can have a slight correction down. In order to tell if it's the big one uh, which is coming, uh, I don't see that yet because everything is in, in very nice trends. Usually when you get this huge correction, you see insane rallies just before things starting to collapse. Things get just extremely overheated and uh, you will see GameStop, AMC, all these uh, small cap stocks, they will just fly sky high uh, and uh, things will be way too overvalued. 
and then you will have that huge correction. But I don't see it this week. Uh, could be that we're getting closer, but uh, not as much. All in all, I expect a green week may not be a super duper week, could be a little bit slow week, hard to say, only four trading days uh, in US this week. And that brings us straight to the first technical analysis. Uh, and uh, we'll just go very quickly uh, through them because they will give an idea about what to expect. We start with uh, Apple last week. I told you, I believe Apple will end at $155 on Friday. Apple ended at 154.30. I was only 70 cents uh, off and uh, the analysis were totally correct. Apple moved just uh, as expected, slightly uh, more or less sideways. Nothing very, very exciting about that. And now I can hear the drilling above. I hope it doesn't disturb you too much. We are uh, above the 150 levels. I told you when it breaks 150, it should go very fast up to 155. That was the uh, argument last week that we was breaking this slight rectangle formation, which has been moving in since July. Now it's hitting 155, but it's doing unfolding volume. It's divergence in volume. I really don't like that. Indicates to me that things uh, should go down. Looking at the, the chart, do this yourself. Uh, go to stockinvest.us, type in the ticket Apple uh, APL or just write Apple and you will see what I mean. The trend is extremely nice. Everything looks nice. Buy signal from short term moving average, long term moving average, but the volume is not following the stock. Stock is going up. The volume is not going up. Indicates to me that we will have a slight correction this week in Apple. No resistance above usually super good sign meaning that it could push much higher and do it very fast it could go to 100 165 uh, in a rush if markets get very green that we get into this uh, very optimistic market uh, this will happen but i don't see it what i believe will happen is that uh, apple will take the natural correction down to 150 extremely strong support between 145 and 150 indicates to me that it will not fall that uh, far during the week it should fall slightly downwards to 150 it could be it do it in one two three days or it will just go slowly day by day down but that is my expectation for a week that it will move maybe up to 157 uh, on the high but by end of week, end at 150. And if you're an Apple investor, you wonder, is this very bad? Is the, the fun over in Apple now? No, it is just a natural correction. There's nothing wrong about it. From 150, we will know if it picks up again or if it starts to move sideways between 150 and 155, waiting for more uh, stronger market direction from the feds, for instance, all these things that will drive these major stock upwards. Jumping straight to the next, Microsoft. What did I say last week about Microsoft? Well, I said to you, I believe Microsoft will end the week around 305, ending at 301.14. So very, very close uh, on Microsoft as well. And I've been very optimistic about Microsoft for uh, weeks, telling that it, that it will do better than the Apple last week, I said, I believe Apple will do better than Microsoft and that was correct because Microsoft was moving slightly uh, downwards. I think this uh, will uh, continue. A relative strength index is still high. The stock uh, and the volume is following each other, meaning that the volume is going down as the stock is going down. I like that thing. Indicates to me that there is nothing very scary, but with some resistance just above today's level and not too much support below. I see a very high chance that uh, Microsoft will correct downwards to 295 during the week. In my opinion, it will move between 295 and $305. If it breaks above 305, it should just push stronger much more. I'm not sure. Um, I would say just generally, generally that uh, the extreme huge volume we had in somewhere around 23rd uh, of May, uh, where, uh, where uh, Microsoft was hitting 305, 
may indicate actually that this will be a top for the medium term that you will not be able in very short future to get above 305. Hopefully I'm wrong, but everything indicates to me that it should move this week for sure between 295 or 305. If above 305, it will go faster, but I don't expect much from Microsoft. And I will actually reduce uh, my target saying that it will end the week at 297 dollars. And uh, that uh, brings us to Tesla. As I said, I believe Tesla is just on the roll upwards, could hit 900 before it finally goes down again. I had a target last week way uh, too high. I kept my, uh, I increased the target to 780, did not manage that, 733. And right now it's struggling a little bit, breaking above 740. But if you look at the chart, you will see it's in a very nice rising trend. Everything indicates that it should continue. It could have a slight dip towards 710. Uh, we know uh, Tesla is a volatile stock, could move downwards to 710 before pushing upwards, or it could just continue to push upwards. If it breaks above 740, it should just go straight to 780. And looking at the volume, looking how it follows the stock, uh, buy signal, short-term moving average, long-term moving average, relative strength index is going in the right direction, it's going upwards, the momentum is, uh, in my opinion, very good. I believe uh, it will just continue upwards, I will not change my target, I will keep my target for 780 also for this week, it might be a little too high, more realistic maybe around 760. But uh, for Tesla, it is the main uh, direction. And uh, as we slowly go upwards, you will also see that I will get less optimistic because at 800, 900, we will probably find a major top coming from Tesla in the short term. Brings us to GameStop. Uh, I brought in GameStop simply because it's extremely popular. Last week, I said I believe it will end at 195, that it will go up. And I've been positive to GameStop for weeks uh, with the target from 170, 180. And last week it was 195 ending the week, 202.75. So it was $7 above my target doing better than uh, what I actually believed. But I think I said some, uh, some that it could go up to the uh, resistance at $220 before moving uh, uh, downwards and that's uh, how it is uh, there is huge resistance at 220 some at 230 there is really no resistance about 230 to 300 but i don't manage to see that happening despite volume following the stock nicely the big big problem is there is really no support under 200 280 it goes buy signals from the uh, long-term moving average. It goes buy signals from the relation between the short and the long-term moving average. Got a sell signal just from the short-term moving average. And the huge, huge question this week is, will it uh, fall below 200 uh, or will it push upwards? And we just have to make a qualified guess. In stock trading, you have to uh, make up your uh, risk reward. So what is the risk? The risk is that it will fall below 200. It could fall very fast to 180, even 160. Remember the volatility of this stock, the nature of this stock. Uh, so there is a fair chance that it can fall all the way, maybe not 160, I would say maybe 167 low. And it can happen in a day or two days. Wouldn't surprise me at all. On the upside, it faces so much resistance at 220 that I don't see unless something, a, a news or extremely positive market. And again, I said, I don't believe it will be a major, major green market. I think it will be horizontal, slightly green market for the week ahead of us. I don't see that helping GameStop to push up. So it has to be a news driven thing uh, or pure speculation from um, the Reddit army. But I'm not sure that happens either. Uh, so I think the risk reward is not what I want to see in general. I think that the, the trend is getting better. I think it's breaking the falling trend, which has been in since 
June. I, uh, so I think it's breaking that one. I think it will just have a natural correction down. I think uh, it may go as low as 180 during the week and then push upward that it will have a little fold and start to push upward, ending the week somewhere where it's close today. So it, I'm, I don't expect much from uh, GameStop. I th actually think I will uh, keep last week uh, last week's target, which was 195. I think I will keep that target also for this week. Uh, hopefully I'm wrong that it will just push upwards, but again, it's this uh, lack of uh, support. And if you trade these stocks, um, Try to look into accumulated volume, support levels, uh, they will help you a lot. You will not be so surprised if it suddenly goes a little under 200 and in just a half an hour even less, it's down at 170. It's simply because there is no support to pick up the stock. The stock moved straight up from 150 to 200 in more or less uh, two days. And uh, during this uh, upturn, there was not enough trades around these levels. It just moved uh, up. We will see, uh, as I said, target for uh, GameStop 195. And that, my friends, brings us to uh, crypto. Crypto is so popular right now. And uh, I would like to say I told you so, uh, because I told you what happened when it was 30,000 that it should just push upwards. I get a lot of requests, can I do different uh, coins? Tell a little bit about uh, some of the other coins, but I don't have enough time in this podcast to tell about all uh, coins assets. The general uh, thing is that uh, I think that the crypto market will just move uh, upwards. And I think that there is more good gains to come from Crypto. Last week I told you I believe the Bitcoin uh, would hit 54,000. In many ways it's good that it didn't because right now everything is suited for strong gains this week. Volume in slight divergence but with the heavy, heavy support at 50,000, 48, 46, 48, 50,000. I don't see uh, Bitcoin falling back. It could mess for sure a, a day or two if some of these whales do a move. It could push downwards to 48. You never know, but it should pick very instantly up. And since being above 50,000, well, this will just go to 60,000. It will not stop. It will just push harder and harder upwards. It might be that I will put the target too high, but again, I will just increase my target. I will say Bitcoin by end of next, next week will be at 60 thousand dollars now you uh, if you want to be realistic uh, you would put more around 55 to 57 if you've been following crypto you see it's been struggling a little bit going very very slowly over the last few weeks i am gambling on the psychology breaking 50,000. more of these people who are skeptic they uh, will flip their mind and now we will have more and more news pushing the crypto. Oh, now crypto will go to 100,000, 200,000. They'll have all these insane uh, news. And uh, people will uh, jump on the train again, pushing Bitcoin straight up. Could go could go to 100,000 uh, very fast. I don't think that will happen. I think it will go to 60,000, have a natural correction to 55,000, then go up to 65,000. Have not told correction, but in general, as I said last week, for weeks and weeks, I think it will be generally good. It will be a little bit up and down, but when we start to look back, it will be super. And uh, I got that 30,000. Happy about that. And uh, I think that I will have much more before going. And about all these other cryptos, as long as the main leader, Bitcoin, um, is pushing uh, upwards, I think that I will just create synergies even for the most shitty coin. Uh, just remember when you trade uh, these really, really small coins, double check that you are able actually to sell it because some is uh, usually it's easy to buy, not so easy to sell. That you are able to sell and what kind of uh, prices you would get when you sell. Make sure that you just don't jump on anything. You think that you are doing very well and you just get stuck when you try to sell and move it to your wallet for a cash withdrawal. Uh, as I say about stock as well, I prefer uh, dealing with proper brokers. 
uh, it's a good advice get up to a level where you can just use proper brokers their fees are not that bad at, at all that uh, brings us to Dogecoin before we look at the share tips of this week and uh, I had 40 cents for Dogecoin uh, for weeks and weeks and it will get to 40 I'm very sure about that as as you remember I bought at, uh, at 20 I sold it when last time it was above 30 I picked it up last week at 27 again saying that it will just continue upwards not much to say i love everything i see about dogecoin you have to remember it's just a small coin it's a barking coin of uh, of uh, of the tesla uh, tesla owner so but everything is good volume is going up coming from a very low relative strength position indicates to me that it should just move uh, faster uh, upwards so i will keep the target for 40 cents i believe that's where we will be i've been wrong about which week it will hit 40 cents been too optimistic for weeks uh last week uh, was indeed uh, a little better but i will uh, move target up to 40 cents we will stick at that uh, last six seven weeks i've been saying the same thing i had targets around 34 35 40 40 40 and 30 was the target last week was 30 cents for token but i'll uh, up my target 40 cents i think it will be good and uh, finally remember the name of the test tesla founder elon musk of course if he says anything and i think it's just a matter of time before he will start throwing his mouth around and pushing dog coin even higher it's a big contrast between bitcoin and dog coin of course Bitcoin being the serious one and Dogecoin the unserious. So that will reflect more or less all these other coins. And that brings us uh, straight to the stock tips of the week. Uh, we are getting to the very last end of uh, this podcast. I will just tell you about the two stocks I will buy this week. I'll tell you a little bit about the stocks that I have bought uh, and told you about in the previous uh, weeks and end with uh, the portfolio. And last week I told you I would buy the Fusion Pharmaceuticals and AMC uh, quite early trying to find a low price to get in. I was able to get in at the Fusion at the 55 cents uh, and it started uh, more or less straight up uh, early in the week. But uh, end of week it fell a little bit back. But still it's up 3.64% uh, since I bought it. I got it at 55 cents ending the week at 57 cents and i think it will just push or worse and i've been trading so much in diffusion pharmaceuticals i love this little uh, penny stock been boring for the last few weeks but i think now it's a very good pickup level again the other stock i got into was amc i thought it would move uh, nicely i was not able to get into the lowest point on monday but that's not always the case because no one really knows what's the lowest point so <clears throat> I got in at 41.65. I kept it during week. I didn't find any good reason to sell it. It's 44.02 right now, so up 5.7% uh, at the week. Good one. I have put in a trailing stop loss on it, so it will uh, be sold with profit no matter what happens. Diffusion pharmaceuticals too volatile, so I don't have stop loss on that one. The week before, uh, or the two weeks before, uh, I had Nivida. I closed Nivida position last week, uh, 229.50, bought it at 202. So that trade was 13.45% profit. I uh, closed Ruku at 368, giving me 5.75% profit. The one stock uh, last week I had uh, Coinbase, bought Coinbase and Singa. Uh, sorry, not last week, but the week before. Uh, and the Coinbase is closed. That was closed uh, the same week with 2.32% profit. Singa, however, I still keep because I think it will push higher. I bought it at 8.64. It's 8.80 now, so it's up one uh, point. It's almost 2%, 185%. But uh, I haven't seen any good reason to close the position uh, because, in my opinion, this one should just push uh, upwards. So what will I look into to buy uh, this week? Right now I have three open positions. I have Singa, Diffusion Pharmaceuticals and AMC for these podcast trades. Well, this week 
I look into SQ and Moderna. These are uh, the two stocks that I think uh, I will be able to do a positive trade. It's uh, Square Inc, uh, ticker SQ. What I like about it is the trend. It's the bottom of the trend. If it managed to get about 272, it should move very fast up to 280, 290. I see the huge possibility of anything from 5 to 12% gain in this stock. I like everything I, uh, I see about it. The RSC direction is missing the volume and the volume will be the telltale if I'm right. But in general, it's uh, the trend. Go to our page, stockinvest.us, type in the ticket SQ and you will see what I mean. Big hurdle is 272. I hope, uh, because there is no trading day today, that this one actually might give me uh, an opportunity to get in around 268. That it will start a little, little bit negative uh, tomorrow. That I can uh, get a little lower uh, price to, is 269.74 ending Friday. Hopefully, hopefully I will be able to get in. Uh, to, uh, end of 267 to 267.80 or to uh, 268.40 anywhere around there to uh, increase the chances of my gain that it will be slow the first few days struggling with the 272 support but by Friday they it should push uh, upwards a little uh, gamble in SQ which I think uh, and hope will do good the other uh, stock I will uh, get at opening is uh, Moderna and of course now everything is about that Third shot, it will be the fourth shot and the fifth shot. But if you look technically, you can see what I mean. It's in a very nice trend. It's the bottom of the trend. It's moving upwards. There is any, absolutely no resistance above today's level up to 450. Ending Friday at 416. So we got $34 to go up. That is 8%, which I think is very likely. I like the uh, direction of the relative strength index. I like the small slight changes in volume on Friday. I hope I will get in at a good price. I'm not sure if I will be able to get in at 416. Uh, at 416, probably I will be in at 417. We'll see how it starts uh, trading uh, on Friday. If uh, sorry, tomorrow on Tuesday. If it's a red day, uh, I could be very lucky get in at 414, maybe 410. Who knows? You you really don't know until the market open. But my idea is I will get in. And I'm pretty sure that I will be able to take it out somewhere around 450, giving me anything from 5 uh, to 9% uh, profit. I will put a trailing stop loss on it because there is not much uh, resistance at 450. So if it's on the roll, it could easily go straight up to 480 and it could even go much higher. So if I'm lucky, it will do what it did some months ago. It went into overbought. Early July, it went into overbought and got overbought and just got up, up, up all the way from around 250 to uh, 480. So more than $230. It doubled uh, when going into this overbought mood. I think there is a fair chance the same thing uh, might happen. Uh, and I think the risk reward is good simply because it's the bottom of the trend. Very strong support around 400, 390, 400. So, uh, of course, that is uh, some volatility. I can stand 5-10% uh, loss if everything goes wrong, in my opinion. But the upside is so good, so that's where I will put my trades. So Square and Moderna, SQ and MRN, uh, MRNA is the two tickers for this week, which I will try to trade. And I'm pretty sure that I will close uh, one or more of these open positions but so far it's been very good brings us to the very end of this portfolio and i'm sorry that i haven't given too many trading tips lately sometimes it's because uh, i feel that i'm repeating myself uh, selling is the hardest part that you ever will do in stock trading buying is so easy and uh, if there is any advice i can give you it is just Try to be patient when buying. Try to have a strategy. Why do you buy? Do not just jump on. Because usually if you jump on, you're jumping to conclusions too fast. Stock may already be on a high level, ready to make a slight correction. And that slight correction may give you, because you might be very right about the direction of the stock, but 
it might be that you can get the stock even a little cheaper, in, uh, reduce your risk and make the risk reward more um, attractive. So try to be a little patient because if you sum up all your trades and buys, you will see this pattern. It goes for more or less everyone. You jump in too fast, you get out too late. You want to be FIFO, uh, FIFO which means first in, first out not Lilo last in last out so that where is where you want to be uh, and about selling knowing that selling is the hardest part that there ever is there is two simple things that can help you when you buy a stock decide what level you will sell at if it falls below a certain level this is where you uh, uh, sell and um, most brokers offer you trailing stop loss or uh, automatic stop loss you know that you will just set the amount where it will uh, sell the losses or you just write on a piece of paper this is where I sell and do it it will hurt you sometimes where you see that you sell just a few minutes later the stock move up but try to do this for 10 trades and I promise you will start to see a pattern where things actually are going to the better reduces your losses and that is a huge part of the trading is to reduce your losses i've been trading for so so many years uh, and i'm not spot on on all my trades i expect actually uh, uh, many of my trades to uh, go the wrong way i just cut them early so that was uh, that slight uh, piece of advice bringing us to the end of the podcast and the portfolio the portfolio did so good last week diffusion was up neo was up ending week for uh, above 40 dollars petrogeo service this uh, this norwegian stock ending at 472 so oil doing as i told you good uh ur energy very very nice 148 it was bought at 98 cents so it's up 51 percent right now Okugen was the only stock that uh, did not move very much, actually fell a few cents or the week ending at 7.43. But then overall the portfolio went up more than 19% last week and I think it will just continue this week. This is the high risk portfolio uh, that we've been following since uh, Christmas. If you are tired from it, I am tired as well. I am slowly will get out of these positions to reduce my risk. From all my portfolios, uh, the oil trading portfolio is the one that's doing the very best. But now is again time uh, as uh, Nasdaq move fast upwards to 16,000. Never know, it could be 20,000 before the end. We'll just see these high risk stocks do uh, super good. And of course, it's nice when the stock do 20% in just a week or more. And I think that by next week, hopefully, we will, uh, you will tune in again and I can tell you that some of these stocks done even better. Forgot to mention Arbutus, which is at 341. So just continue upwards. And I think it will just continue slowly upwards. For So that's uh, that's it. Um, I hope there was not too much disturbances in this podcast. I'll remind you that the podcast will also be released on our YouTube channel. You will find it if you just uh, search for it, stockinvest.us at YouTube. There it will be, and after some hours, it will also be able to see it with texts if you do not fully get what I'm saying. I'm Norwegian by nature, not uh, English, so sometimes my uh, word vocabulary is not very best either. Anyway, as usual, I hope, I really hope that you will have a green week, that you will cash in, that you will do some very good trades dig more into uh, other stock podcasts try to grab up uh, on good trading strategies don't make everything just a pure luck that is how you will lose money you will have some good trades but in general you have more bad trades than good trades next week will be week 37 i hope you'll tune in until then have a good time bye That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.